Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece, and we're just quickly going to summarize in this video all the different regulatory mechanisms for blood pressure. We'll start out with a simple flowchart that doesn't quite include the renal mechanisms directly, where if we take a look here at the start where our blood pressure is dropping, or we might have a drop in blood volume, which of course ultimately leads to a drop in blood pressure. We have two major mechanisms, neural mechanisms, endocrine mechanisms. Again, we'll look at renal mechanisms on another slide. Within the endocrine mechanisms, there are a variety of hormones that can either impact um, vasoconstriction to bring up our um, peripheral resistance, or we can increase blood volume with the help of uh, blood uh, hormones, I'm sorry, that retain fluid in the bloodstream, such as ADH and indirectly via angiotensin II and aldosterone and EBO. Um, we can also depend on uh, hormones that impact contractility of the heart to where we see less of contractility. And of course, that would um, impact our cardiac output and therefore um, eventually blood pressure. Within the neural mechanisms, we're definitely, definitely needing to address our cardiovascular centers. Remember that includes your cardioacceleratory center, your cardioinhibitory center, plus your vasomotor center. The cardioacceleratory center is sending signals to the sympathetic fibers, especially when our blood pressure is dropping we're going to see that the cardioacceleratory center will kick in in an attempt to increase vasoconstriction. I'm sorry, in, in an attempt to increase heart rate and contractility, therefore increase cardiac output. We're going to see that in under low blood pressure or decreasing blood pressure, our cardioinhibitory center should be inhibited such that the parasympathetic fibers will not slow down the heart. We want to maintain good cardiac output to maintain a, a good blood pressure. And we will want to stimulate the sympathetic fibers that innervate the blood vessels, vessels so they, they uh, trigger vasoconstriction and increase peripheral resistance. And for that, we need to stimulate the vasomotor center. All these mechanisms that involve our cardio, cardiovascular centers are going to depend on sensory receptors we refer to as the baroreceptors, which we just studied in quite a bit of detail along with their aortic and carotid reflexes. We didn't say much yet about the chemoreceptors. They respond to changes in pH, carbon dioxide, and oxygen levels, and their ultimate response will be the same way as the baroreceptors, and they can influence blood pressure as well. And notice, of course, that we need to not forget that if we activate the sympathetic nervous system because our blood pressure is dropping, we're going to have to address the impacts of norepinephrine and epinephrine, which can impact not just cardiac output, but also uh, peripheral resistance. Here then we see a rather comprehensive flowchart. I'm not going to go over all the details. I suggest you do. It'll be a great practice. You can probably tease apart some of the steps even more so. Notice that we are looking at this flowchart from the perspective of neural and endocrine mechanisms. And that might be uh, either short or long term. Typically neural mechanisms are short term endocrine mechanisms are long-term. When it talks about blood chemistry, that's what involves the chemoreceptors. Um, but again, they function very similarly towards regulating blood pressure as the baroreceptors. They just respond to different stimuli. For the neural mechanisms, we're going to be talking about the cardiovascular centers and how they impact anywhere from heart rate to contractility therefore cardiac output, as well as vasoconstriction versus vasodilation. 
when it comes to endocrine control and the various hormones, and they're not all listed here, what's nice about this particular flowchart is that it reminds us of all the different organs that function as um, endocrine regulatory uh, structures for blood pressure. For, for starters, our kidneys by secreting renin, which leads to the renin-angiotensin mechanism, which can then in turn trigger the release of aldosterone, but let's not also forget ADH. Um, it also produces erythropoietin, which indirectly can increase blood volume as well. The adrenal gland is a hormone-producing gland, particularly we're going to see that the um, adrenal cortex will produce epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are part of a group of hormones which we call the catecholamines. You'll see that term used, implying that they're made up of amino acids. The adrenal gland also produces um, aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. Oh, I misspoke, by the way. The epinephrine and norepinephrine are produced by the adrenal medulla, while... Uh, aldosterone is produced by the adrenal cortex. The brain with the pituitary gland is going to be involved in producing antidiuretic hormone, which when the blood pressure is low is going to be released is going to be released in an attempt to retain water in the blood and that brings up our blood volume and therefore blood pressure and finally the heart which in response to high blood pressure will release antidiuretic hormone that antidiuretic hormone I'm sorry atrionatriuretic hormone um, I've ma been making too many videos I think it's time to stop so the heart produces in response to a high blood pressure atrial natriuretic hormone or factor as the atria are stretched and this hormone is released in response to high blood pressure we're going to see that this particular hormone is going to promote the getting rid of salts and that promotes the getting rid of water from the bloodstream therefore we urinate more less blood blood volume we bring down the blood pressure so i've just picked uh, little areas here to expand on, but be sure that you can do that with other parts of this flow chart. And so this finally wraps up all the regulatory mechanisms for blood pressure.